Now, Alfred Russell Wallace, another great hero of mine, besides Darwin, and in many ways a much more romantic figure, well, in all ways, almost. Uh, he was 16 years younger than Darwin, working class, you could say. His father kept losing money, losing his uh, investments, and or poorer and poorer. So, at the age of 17, uh, Wallace had to earn his own living, and he was a surveyor for the canals. It was one part of his uh, career which was vital. He didn't know it at the time, of course, but he could see different sediments laid down and he could see the different shells in the sediments and yet when he was working on canals, digging the trenches in a different part of the country, there was the same uh, strata with the same shells. So he got his geological background uh, and he didn't know it, but he, he got that stretch of time, that vast stretch of time which was necessary for the theory that he developed. Um, so, 17 years old, maybe he was 18 or so by then, uh, teaching in a school in Leicester, and he met another really remarkable man, uh, even more obscure now than Wallace, called Henry Walter Bates. And the two young men, they read together, they read vastly, just like the young Darwin did. Um, and this was their favourite book. Uh, my copy's a bit smashed up on the boat, the books don't like to be at sea, really. But this, uh, Robert Chambers, Vestiges of the Natural History of Creation, now this was a runaway bestseller, this is the 10th edition I think. Uh, tremendous, tremendous sales. Uh, and the author was anonymous because he felt that uh, he couldn't be a respectable man and publish a book about evolution. Now there's no mechanism for evolution in this, it's, um, but it's wonderfully, wonderfully exciting how one animal turns into another. It's a tremendous popular read. Uh, and another book they read was Surprise. It's this one you might recognise. Uh, the Voyage Around the World of uh, HMS Beagle. Um, this was their favourite book, and the description in here of the jungles, that wonderful lyrical passage, Darwin's most lyrical passage, when the excitement just, the page catches fire, when he's in a jungle for the first time. Now, he was only in it, remember, for uh, a day, two days at the most. Um, and that's one of the great differences between Darwin and Wallace, and indeed Bates. Uh, so the two young men read that, and they decide, right, somehow or other, we are going to get to that rainforest, that jungle. And they make an arrangement with a, a really kind, a wonderful man in London called Stevens, who is an agent for collectors. A lot of collecting going on at the time because of natural theology. So God had made every insect in the world. So it didn't matter how small it was, there were collectors collecting God's works in the beautiful, beautiful uh, mahogany cabinets of Victorian England. So there was a market there. So they arranged with him to go and collect insects. And Stevens gave them an advance. They took off to uh, the Amazon, Belém, made their way up. Uh, and Wallace stayed in the Amazon for, in the Amazons for four years uh, and came back. Bates stayed there for, in fact, for 11 years, alone, as it were, in the jungle, but um, with, with the companions who, who lived locally. And that was one, one reason why they produced, without knowing it, eventually produced an entirely new kind of travel narrative. Uh, they never occurred to them, not to mention the people who were with them, the locals, as we said, uh, the villagers. They all come across uh, as helpless, whereas Darwin would never have mentioned the people with him, the local inhabitants of the region, as we say on the World Service, because that would be like talking about your butler, it's just not done. So, completely different feel of these books. Um, much more attractive, I think. Anyway, rejoin Wallace and he's setting off from the Amazon, four years of collecting with all his specimens and his notebooks. He sent a lot back, he's paid his way, but he's on ship uh, and he's suffering a fit of malaria and the captain comes out on deck, says come out on deck, uh, look at this, what do you think? And the ship is on fire. And he just gets one notebook, uh, one sketchbook, and that's it. And he gets into the life raft. And down goes all his collections, everything. He's lost everything. And he's, they're eventually picked up. Uh, they're starving. They're picked up by uh, another boat. Uh, and just that one, that one is, is carrying coal, and it just gets into port uh, before that um, burns too. <laughs> Uh, he is just terrible luck. And 
astonishing he recovers from this. Um, in fact, I think probably it was a good thing in the very, very long run because he had no specimens. He couldn't sit down and examine them for the rest of his life as Darwin did with his and indeed as Bates did with his when he got home. Uh, he had to do something. And what does he do? He goes, well, he goes to the British Museum, the Natural History Museum, and he looks at all the maps and he sees uh, the area that's least explored. Absolutely nothing known about it, really. The fauna and flora are a mystery, wonderfully exciting. And he sets off for the Malay Archipelago. Uh, and there he spends eight years. Now, he's already a much better naturalist than Darwin ever was, a field naturalist. In other words, um, his collected. Well, he had to be, because a new species is worth about 10, 12 times uh, something that's, that's known. So he was always looking for new species, a fantastic observer. Uh, and one night he's uh, again suffering from malaria and covered in leg ulcers and he, he can't walk. He's such a brave guy. He's looking at these ulcers on his legs and he, he'll say, well, my God, that one's a different shade of green. There must be a new species of bug in there. <laughs> uh, bang. Uh, the theory of uh, evolution by natural selection comes to him uh, in a fever. And he writes down the four pages or so and sends them off to Darwin. And when Darwin gets them, he's appalled. Uh, and uh, Lyle and Hooker, Darwin's friends, they arrange to have these papers, Wallace's letter, published with, uh, by, by which I mean announced at the um, Linnaean Society, with Darwin's notes from 1844. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt that Darwin, of course, had been working on this very theory with the mechanism of natural selection in place, uh, since, certainly since 1842. And Wallace thinks of it like that in 1858, except that it's not really like that. He's been, he sets out when they go, Bates and Wallace go to the Amazon jungle, they're actually thinking, this is going to crack it. This is going to provide us with a mechanism for evolution. So unlike Darwin, they know exactly what they're looking for. It just takes a long time. And then, I mean, you could say that it's Wallace's, Wallace's theory, but look, he, he, made, he made the most fantastic contribution that no one can ever take away from him. He was the first man to realize uh, the tectonic plate theory, really. He traces a line. He realizes that right across the Malay Archipelago, the, the birds and the animals are different one side to the other. And at one place, this line of his, dividing line between the fauna and flora, passes uh, through a strait that is 20 miles wide between Bali and Lombok. Uh, different animals, different plants, either side. And one is the Australian plate, one's the Asian plate. He never uses the word plate because he doesn't under, you know, he couldn't expect him to explore the depths of the sea at that time. But he gets it, it's absolutely right. Everything since has proved him right. Um, a wonderful, wonderful man. But then, first half of his life, he got everything right. Second half of his life, really got everything wrong. He became an intense spiritualist and thought that we had a big brain because God had ordained it, or at least the spirits. He thought there were spirits in uh, trees and stones and flowers everywhere you look. I think that's the result of A, having a sister who is a medium, a spiritualist, and B, living for so long with people who just accept that, take that for normal. It, it really gets to you. Living in the Congo, I know that. <laughs> but it made him, it, it tore his reputation to pieces for a long time. But what a man. What a hero. <laughs>